Uh, so, first of all, I would like uh, to make a summary of my paper in, in case not everyone had a chance to get acquainted with it. Um, and uh, in my report, I'm touching upon the theme of subjectivity. And the main question I'm trying to answer is uh, how it is possible to set goals reasonably today. Uh, we are going through difficult time. Plans and hopes are crumbling, and people slowly feel the need to find a, something that gives them confidence in their action and allows them to think about the future as such. Uh, it's not uncommon to turn to psychologists for help, and they usually urge to seek support uh, in yourself. But not every psychologist, unfortunately, will be able to say what should be understood as yourself. And the problem does indeed exist. Um, trying to define the I as an experiential individual, we very quickly discover that any physical attribute is external to the self. Uh, my hand, my head, even my brain, are not the self as such. Uh, also, thoughts or feelings are not really me. They are constantly changing, but I do not cease to be the I. Uh, at the same time, I can learn about myself from the results of my deeds, uh, see myself uh, in the mirror of the other, that is in the totality of all relationships that take place in my life, uh, I am the whole world represented through me. Uh, I am only then the a real I when there is no more me in the I. As uh, Gennady Lobostov, uh, Ilyenkov's uh, st student, wrote. This... Uh, as well as many other things, was comprehended by German philosophers. Uh, Kant discovered in the eye the function of synth synthesizing the world as a whole. Cognition carried out through the content of thought form categories produces an image of reality in, in which practical reason uh, the rational will of the subject exercises its goal setting. Fichte criticizes the a priori nature of the Kantian categorical apparatus, proving the necessity of deducing categories from a single principle, which for Fichte is the I. Moreover, he showed that the subject uh, not just perceives the world as given, but also acts as the creator of the non-I. In Hegel's system, the self-consciousness of the subject unfolds through the appropriation of forms, which are at the same time nothing more than the positioning of the self outside, the logically consistent self-movement of the substance subject. In Hegel, the self appears as a cognitive ability rooted uh, in a thinking as such. We, however, must understand thinking itself not as an autonomous mystical essence. It is a, a human who thinks being in unity with society, with the social historical collective that produces its material and spiritual life states. Ilyankov, in his essay, uh, What is P Personality? Uh, thinking is an, is an ideal component of human practice, uh, of the mode of production of material life. Uh, in this way, the self contains a universal apparatus that enables appropriation of a reality, and it is neither arbitrary nor independent, but is a particle of the absolute, the 
universal in relation to its singularity. And as Marx further demonstrated, this universal is the historical concreteness, the totality of the forces of production and uh, industrial relations that constitute uh, that uh, constitute a system, a whole that is uh, based upon the way the labor is organized. What does it mean to an uh, individual? First of all, one cannot avoid digging deep into the theory. Understanding the world in its unity is inseparable from reasonable goal setting. The wholeness of the development process makes it possible to recreate the so-called reverse casuality in thinking. And substantive unity provides the key to revealing the measure of things, their inner objective necessity. With this in mind, one can turn to the prominent theorists of today, uh, but it is questionable whether famous uh, philosophers can give relevant guidance. One may, for example, come across such personality as Slavoj Žižek. Uh, he frequently touches upon the theme of subjectivity, and although he describes himself as a Hegelian, he nevertheless considers the system of the German classicists uh, insufficient in terms of understanding the essence of the subject. As a supplement, he offers a um, philosophical reading of Lacan's psychoanalysis. Uh, in a plenty of books that he has written, uh, the ticklish subject, the absent center of political ontology, by way of example, he states that subject as a logical category differs radically from the other logical categories. And namely, it cannot be sublated. The negation of negation in this case has no affirmative meaning. It turns into eternal alienation. Uh, Zizek explains uh, that the fulfillment of such negation without sublation is the logical purpose uh, is the logical purpose of the subject. It is teleologically determined to engage in the battle with substance and to be defeated by it. This, of course, runs counter to the traditional understanding of the substance subject, according to which substance should recognize itself as a subject by opposing itself in the form of a singularity. And this singularity should then absorb the universal substantive content. Uh, this discrepancy is uh, by no means accidental to his theory. It is the main underlying rationale for his interpretation of the subject as such. Uh, for this purpose, he deploys the concept of I elaborated by Jacques Lacan. Uh, the I or the imaginary is a result of an empirical subject engagement with the so-called register of symbolic uh, system of signifiers, which is mainly language and social hierarchy. Involvement in the symbolic takes place at the earliest formation of the human individual through the big other, a form of subjectivity distinct from the I, uh, through which the I defines itself. Uh, dependence on the big other is material and physical. It provides means for life. Uh, Lacan's Zizek subject tries to make the subject of his dependence completely his own, to absorb it without a trace, in vain, of course. At the same time, without this object, there is no subject, uh, there is only emptiness, the chaos of sensations, physical needs. But, is, uh, but is, it is this emptiness that proves uh, to be the main driver to, the, uh, to form human subjectivity. It continually wishes to fill itself with new and new sujets um, from the symbolic, each time falling short of the fullness it desires. 
the subject is thus constituted by permanent lack. So uh, this concept is different from Ilyankov's uh, concept of su subjectivity of person personality. And let's see what is lacking in this concept of lack. First of all, uh, the objective practice and feedback from uh, things uh, from the material world that uh, exists outside and is independent of man. The loss of social substance, uh, which is uh, in Zizek's theory, uh, kind of substitute for substance itself, uh, and subject are separ separated from nature by an insurmountable chasm. Uh, secondly, Zizek's concept uh, returns us to an empirical understanding of the subject as an ind individual. Uh, in his article, The Interpassive Subject, he contrasts the common view of subjectivity as a phenomenal experience uh, of sensations with the Lacanian subjectivity of repressed sensations. But uh, in this way, he doesn't go beyond it, namely the sensations. Although everything human is appropriated by an individual from the symbolic, the subject remains subject due to the inner emptiness and helplessness of the real. Uh, to the original need that is inherent in him as in a living organism. So main conclusion that Zizek comes to is that each and every activity is vain activity. One can achieve self-determination de not through activity, but through detachment. So uh, suddenly the latest theory of a so-called Hegel and Marx follower turns into a quiet religious mystical parable about the renunciation of the self. Uh, this epistemological pessimism of Zizek's position clearly demonstrates the uh, contemplativity about the um, world and the nature of human in interaction that Marx noted in the thesis on Feuerbach. Uh, by excluding labor, uh, object practical activity from the uh, foundations that form subjectivity, the entire dialectic of social development is reduced to relations of do domination and sub subordination, a struggle for power. Zizek's substance uh, turns it to the dictate of the will of the master. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, the master of the yeah. means. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe uh, two minutes more, uh, so that we have enough time to, to take questions. Um, and um, what I would uh, like to know also um, was um, by, by reading your paper, you um, already hinted at this. So this would be maybe uh, interesting for, for the uh, conclusion. What are the consequences of these two different notions of uh, personality and subjectivity? You hinted at this in, in, the, in your title. Yeah? Well, yeah, um, the main conclusion I came to is that uh, in the Zizek's concept, uh, the subject is split. So reasonable goal setting as, uh, uh, as a form of activity, uh, which is aimed at pursuing um, certain goal is hardly possible in current uh, 
society which is uh, based on the ideology and uh, in which uh, uh, one can hardly uh, ever uh, uh, ever get to understand the true nature of things the uh, objective necessity of their existence so what Zizek offers to us is uh, to uh, is a kind of uh, schism he has to uh, become a uh, to um, well this remains of the Uh, uh, this uh, reminds of middle age mysticism uh, well when detachment was the cure for the uh, for the soul uh, yeah yeah I, I so and, and and yeah yeah and uh, according to Eli Ilyenkov subject is not split as the objective practice, the tool mediation also pointed out by Andy Blunden cannot be left behind the social practice, the public life, and thus we still have the key to understand the law of nature and uh, this always proves to be the um, uh, the rational why we can also get to know the social uh, a reality and uh, act reasonably in it yeah yeah uh, i i understand that uh would bring me to my uh, first question, first of all, uh, thank you. And I would like to ask what uh, is the name of your little furry helper, of your cat? <laughs> we, we saw, uh, what's, what's his or her name? Uh, well, uh, he, his name is uh, Thoth, uh, like Egyptian god. Well, I see, <laughs> very nice. Yes, also thanks to uh, him. Um, my first question is actually directly relating to the last things you, you said. Um, so you argue um, that uh, Zizek's concept, uh, in contrast to Ilyenko's uh, concept of uh, subjectivity or personality, uh, that I, I understood that you did not uh, distinguish uh, be between that uh, very much, but that's that's uh, not a problem. I think the argument was clear enough that in contrast, this gives us no opportunity, for example, to act accordingly to ideals, for example, which is uh, the topic of uh, our meeting also, how to uh, act accordingly to ideals for, for uh, um, creating a certain outcomes in the future, right? So uh, that's, uh, if I understood you correctly, please uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that would be the main um, hypothesis. So you, you, the main argument that uh, um, um, the concept of personality uh, developed like uh, the one uh, from the example of Zizek is not able to give us uh, this kind of a sense of acting in a social setting accordingly to uh, ideas uh, the agents set themselves. Is this uh, right? Yes, that is right. Uh, but uh, I would like to uh, stress that uh, we should not think of ideals like uh, something, uh, well, we just eager to be just like uh, some some image, uh, some abstract image, but uh, something that that the that stems from the 
necessity in the um, way we live, uh, in the way the labor is uh, organized uh, in the current historical concreteness. Well, so, so it's not just about uh, wish, about uh, desire to, to be someone, but uh, it's um, what uh, urges us to act in a certain way. And uh, our goal is to understand that and to uh, elabor elaborate as concrete course of action uh, as possible. Okay, uh, I open the floor for questions now. Uh, so, so we have a question from Isabel. Okay, uh, Isabel, can you? Yeah, uh, hi. I think it goes in, in a similar direction like yours, Sasha. It's, um, I find it very interesting to contrast Lacanian psychoanalysis and then Ilyenkov's um, conception of subjectivity on the other hand. And it's a kind of reverse question. So I'm interested maybe for you to explain a bit more why Ilyenkov doesn't share the same presumptions like Lacan. So what, what are his views on subjectivity and otherness and alienation and how what can maybe psychoanalysis learn from Ilyenkov's views and how can we maybe revise certain Lacanian formulas by using Ilyenkov's theory? It's quite a big question, but maybe if you have some interesting ideas, I'd be curious. Uh, well, uh, I actually started uh, from the point uh, in, in, in my own research, uh, whether these two approaches can be combined. Well, because the method, uh, methodology is quite different and the um, basis is also quite different as well as the outcome. El Ilyankov's uh, um, approach to subjectivity is based uh, uh, upon the um, so-called uh, system of uh, uh, system where there is a a relation of a person to the thing and through it to in another person. So it's not just the will of the uh, big other. It's not just his imposition of uh, certain master signifiers, but uh, real uh, objective practice uh, that uh, is the source of uh, subjectivity of uh, A human uh, relations to things and to uh, each other. Also, uh, Ilyenkov uh, understands um, subject, the personality, actually not as an empirical uh, subject. It's uh, his su su subject is more of the universal notion uh, which can not necessarily be attributed to a certain individual uh, well uh, it's um, may i quote uh, give a quote by ilyankov um, just a second uh, it is a well law governing the way people live uh, the way they communicate and uh, it functions uh, uh, not, uh, uh, um, it's actually uh, surprisingly functions due to this, uh, the, the similarity of uh, individual, not uh, this uh, un understanding of uh, personality uh, of uh, as a universal does not con contradict that. Um, 
so uh, there is a basic difference of two approaches uh, the understanding personality as a uh, universal and uh, uh, not ex ex excluding uh, objective practice from the uh, formation of subjectivity mm -hmm. this uh -huh, uh, and um, if we it's still for me a question whether uh, so somehow these two approaches uh, can be combined uh, because uh, the outcome that we get from the Zizek concept and from Ilyankov's concepts are uh, is quite different but um, well um, it's also a question of practice yeah uh, whether um, an ind individual uh, ha can solve his own problems his own uh, concerns uh, by uh, consulting with a therapist with a psychologist or uh, there, there should be another approach to it mm. i think that's a very important uh, question you raise uh, because maybe it's one is one conception is more on the level of analysis in Zizek, whereas uh, uh, Ilyenkov is more uh, conceptual, but uh, <clears throat> let's uh, keep this because there was another question by Corinna. Maybe? Yeah, there's a question from Alex on the. Ah, also, okay, we have two questions and uh, about five minutes left, just that you know. Maybe mm -hmm. Alex first? Yeah, we would. Well, it's a bit late anyway, so we can do. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So, and yes, yeah, okay. this is the okay. This is the microphone. Just it's easier to hold this so people at home can get the uh, <laughs> Thank you. Also, after the cat comes, yeah, come here. She can, she can, she can, yeah, she can see me. Can she see me? Echo. Please, uh, you can get in touch with. Uh, and we will contribute this afterwards. Uh, shall we try like this? Yeah. Is this work? Yeah, you can. Well, it, it's fine. I think that they okay. can just hear you. Okay, yeah. I just want to say a comment, uh, Natalia, that um, it seems to me that Ilyenko takes Hegel in a different way than Zizek, because for Zizek, the big other is an empty, as you describe it, it's a, it's a complete vacuum of nothing. And with, I would have, from your presentation, the way that the universal is in the individual and the individual is in the universal, which is Ilyenko's approach. Um, it's not, the other of us is not empty. It's the source of development actually. And also the, it, I think the whole co concept of the negative in Zizek is turned into a, a, a road, road to nowhere, whereas, the more Hegelian approach would be to see the negative, the other, as actually the source of development and, and, a, and a rich and developing and contradictory other that is, is not does not lead to desperation. <laughs> That's it. Yes, so as I understood that was not basically a question, but a summary and yes, that was the basic idea so due to Ilyankov uh, personality is a constant uh, source of development and uh, we uh, should, should not uh, try to resolve some uh, personal problems which are uh, always uh, a projection by the way of the uh, social problems, uh, but uh, we should not look somewhere um, deep inside, but we should look outward to the outside. What is uh, going on in the 
the world and what is our place in the practice uh, in the cu current historical practice and what we actually can do. Thanks. Uh, should, I, should I try to read out that? Yes. Oh, I, I'm not myself sure what is meant, but I'll uh, have a go. Right. So, um, Alex would like to know the difference in the understanding of corporeal to bodily experience rather than mind. The body that is alienated from itself mystifies itself through imagination. That's what Alex says, Zizek is saying that um, body mystifies itself through imagination, or the body that is objectifying and realizing itself. So I'm not sure, Alex, if you're saying that through the income of the body is objectifying itself in a way that realizes itself, and for Zizek, it's alienating itself because it's in the imagination. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure, Natalia, if you got more from this or if you understand what Alex means. Uh, yeah, yes, that, that is actually a great point uh, because, um, yeah, in G Zizek's or Lacanian concept, the body alienates itself. It has uh, always kind of uh, narcissistic uh, imaginary uh, image of himself, which uh, ha has no direct uh, a relation with the self, but is uh, kind of uh, dream, I don't know, about yourself. Um, but in uh, mm, perhaps that is not clearly stated uh, by Ilyankov, but we can derive that from uh, his concept, uh, the human body, uh, as we know it, is uh, always a product of labor as well. And uh, no, um, uh, human body be becomes a uh, subject to uh, labor practices, even uh, before it appears when uh, a woman is pregnant, um, there are all, already many labor practices involved. So uh, there's uh, hardly uh, ever s s something that is uh, absolutely natural in a human uh, almost everything uh, has this uh, trace of uh, objectifying himself on being involved in labor practices well and this also uh, this also uh, is a is one more point that It leads to the different understanding of human capability of uh, appropriating the a loss of uh, the real world, such of nature. Thanks a lot, Natalia. Uh, if there are no further questions, I think we uh, make our first prayer tonight.